Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Autumn Everest and today I'm building two houses from the 1980s. I think. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so when I was doing my research for all this build, I typically would go to Google and ask the question, you know, what was being built at that time. I cannot for the life of me find that, you know, the answer to that question. So I was like, okay, what do I do for this build? I need to do it. I do enjoy doing this series of like houses through the ages. I don't know what it is, but I really love, um, you know, going about, about like my local area, or just like out and about and to be actually recognizing when all these houses were being built it just makes me happy i don't know why but it does so i was like okay what do i do for this build for this video what do i do i need to build something and so i decided to discuss this with my mum um and my mum was also having the same problem because she also went to google and asked the same question what was being built here in the uk in the 80s and nothing popped up which is brilliant um, all I was getting was that um, we were having a housing crisis in the UK during the 80s, which is great to know, but it doesn't answer the question, what did the houses look like? And so I decided to also ask my dad, <coughs> sorry, well, I decided to also ask my dad and he said, I do know, but it's hard to describe. I was like, well, that's not very helpful either. So I decided to go ahead and build two houses that I think were being built here in the UK during the 80s. Um, which means I've just increased my chances, so at least one of them hopefully was being built here in the UK during the 80s. So the one that we're building at the moment, so the one on the right, um, is based on a picture that I found when I was doing my research, while trying to do my research, and it has to be a, a, a build that was being built in the UK. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense as to why it would pop up when I'm asking that question. So hopefully that one there was actually being built in the 80s. And when I was looking at the picture, I was like, oh, this will be really easy to build in The Sims 4 because I believe we have a door that's very similar to the dorm that I'm looking at and the railings around those windows, we have them in The Sims 4. Um, it turns out that door that I was thinking of was actually a window and that window can be placed on a medium height wall um, which I decided to do but as I went inside uh, the walls were just too high it looked a bit funny and odd I was like no I can't do this um, let's just shrink the walls back down and hopefully that window doesn't disappear um, and because I placed it in the basement, I think that's the reason why it stayed where it was. Um, and the reason why I placed the window into a basement, um, I did that because then it means your sims can actually walk through the door and actually use it as a door. Um, and I have play tested both of these houses, especially the one on the right, and they do go through the door, which is great. The problem with the railings, um, they weren't long enough i wanted to like stretch them out and i couldn't do that so i had to place lots of them and yes the house on the right when you go inside before i decorated it it looked a bit funny weird and messy um i did manage to cover all of that up with like curtains and stuff but there was no hiding the door and the one on the left, which is the one we are now inside that is based on a house i would typically see when I'm out and about on my travels and I did ask my dad are any of these two houses built in the 80s he's like yep they were built in the 80s so I was like good enough for me okay so we are now inside and for the 90s interior kitchens you would see an all white appliance oak cabinets and tiled worktops and lino flooring so I do decorate both interiors, so both houses. Um, I'll say this is more of like a traditional looking house and the one next door is more modern. The kitchen for the house next door is a kitchen that I would typically more see in houses or commercial buildings that haven't been updated in a long while. It, it's also a kitchen I saw when I was looking through old family 
photos because for this build because it's only 40 years ago I really really wanted to get this right you know I wanted to at, to at least have something that people who were living in the 80s would recognize you go oh yeah I recognize that or oh yeah that sounds familiar I wanted to have that sort of like recognizability to it and so I was so stressed doing this I enjoy doing it it's just really I just find it really stressful the closer we get to the year we are in and like I said it was only four years ago I felt like I should know this so bathrooms in the 80s you would typically find lino flooring sunken bathtubs I tried my best to create a sunken bathtub using platforms because we do have a bathroom in between the garage and the kitchen in this build but I could not for the life of me figure it out the bath was just too low so I was like right I'm just gonna move on this build is stressful enough I don't need this so we would also find marble spa like bathrooms with a beige and white bathroom suite separate and a separate room for the loo so <clears throat> like I said I'm I think um I got like a lot of like research from everywhere when it when it came to the interior so I not only got my research from Google I also got research from um, programs that were set in the 80s so for example Stranger Things and a program called Ashes to Ashes I also talked to my parents because at that time in the 80s they were living together in a flat and I also uh, looked through family photographs because again all my aunts and uncles were living in their own place during the 80s so they would probably have interior trends that were going about during the 80s hopefully so that's what I decided to do um, so for this living room um, I remember my mum talking about when she was working in the 80s she had a friend and colleague and she would pop over to their place and she remembers the peach walls and the glass coffee table so I was like okay that's what I'm going to do for this living room I decided to also incorporate the green carpet that apparently my parents had in their place so we have peach walls with green carpet and a glass um, coffee table which are things that you would all typically see in a 1980s house so for walls you would also typically see wood chip paper which is a pain in the ass to take off and to paint over Artex ceilings and walls which again pain to remove <clears throat> wallpaper borders around the top walls finished with a stippled and mottled effect and swirl patterns with and dado rails so we are now in like the conservatory slash sunroom whatever you want to call it uh, so for this wallpaper I noticed it had like this mottled effect, it might be hard to see but it does have this sort of like mottled textured on it and these sofas here um, they are called cane furniture that is something I learned from my dad he mentioned um, they had cane um, sofas in their living room and I have picture proof of it they were like these squishy looking sofas it was green with white polka dots with like um bamboo my, my dad said it was bamboo like um um going around it it looks like furniture you would stick outside but they had it in the living room so other furniture bits and pieces that you would find in 1980s houses would include lead chintzy curtains mottled sofas glass dining room and coffee tables um, anything mirrored, oversized headboards, anything metallic, neon tube lighting, cane furniture like the sofas in the uh, sunroom, um, bamboo curtains. So my dad mentioned um, he remembers like bamboo curtains over the bathroom doors. So that's what I decided to do for this bill for this house. Um, I decided I think they're like city living beaded curtains, but they're trying to represent the the, you know the um what's it called bamboo curtains round beds water beds mirrored ceilings cane web chairs and i use a ton of cane web chairs in the house on the right which we will be decorating soon um track ceiling heights uh which i use downstairs in the living room upstairs i decided to use these ceiling lights um just because it felt more like home and they're sterile 
uh, colored carpets and the colors that you would typically see in 1980s interior design would include peach, beige, magnolia, red and black color schemes, lavender, teal, turquoise, um, a color I can't pronounce, light pink, bluish gray, blue, bold graphics and shapes. So I am now currently doing the infant's room for this house and um, I don't know how long the Sims 4 has had infants for and I know the first thing that most people did was to decorate a room for them. That room there is my first infant's room that I have done in the Sims 4. And so yes, I have tried to keep keep it in the 1980s style, but because it is my first infant's room, I just couldn't help myself, you know? I wanted to make it look really cute and squishy and adorable. And so I did add a couple of items here and there that I know you would definitely not find in the 1980s, like that um, lamp from the werewolves pack. I just thought it was so cute and it goes with the theme. I just couldn't help myself. I wanted it, so I popped it in there. I know, I know, it's not 1980s, but who cares? You can delete it if it really bothers you. So for this room here, I decided to go ahead and look at um, Stranger Things because we all know Stranger Things is a program based in the 1980s. And so I decided to have a look at Nancy Wheeler's bedroom and I decided to use that as my inspiration. And I was looking at all these photos, all these images of the 1980s and it's all very chintzy and layered and it's like, okay, well, that's a little bit much. Um, but when I was decorating this um, kid's bedroom and taking the screenshots, I was like, actually, it's actually quite nice. It's not that you know, not that bad looking. Um, but there are sort of like restrictions of the game itself with like the items. Um, so it, I think it's not as chintzy or ugly looking that I hoped. Um, but anyways, um, I think the room that we put, there we go. The room that we are now decorating is a bedroom. It's a teenager's bedroom, but the bedroom is based off um, Alex Drake's bedroom from Ashes to Ashes. Now, Ashes to Ashes is another TV program that is based in the 1980s. Um, it is the sister program or the spin-off program to Life on Mars. And um, this is what Alex Drake's bedroom looks like. I decided to convert it into a teenager's bedroom um, because for the parents' bedroom, I, w I knew I wanted to explore the black and white colour scheme. So this is just basically what everything that's in her bedroom. Um, I did add some posters to the wall to make it look more like a teenager's bedroom and not like the main bedroom um, because I had pl plans for the for the main bedroom so I just wanted to make it look like a teenager's bedroom. And now typically I would also go through facts about the 1980s. So here we go. So. I will, like every now and again, if I see something that I want to talk about, I will stop myself and talk about it, but otherwise. Um, in, the in 1981, Phil Collins released In The Air Tonight. Now, whenever I hear that song, it just reminds me of the, of the Cabaret's advert from 2007, I think. And um, it reminds me of the Cabaret advert. It was a brilliant advert. It was just like a, a gorilla in the zone just waiting for them to play the drums and he just goes for it and it's a brilliant advert to sell ch chocolate and that's what I think of. Also in 1981 we have the wedding of then Prince Charles and Lady Diana which happened on the 29th of July 1981. In 1982, the Falklands War took place on the 2nd of April. 1982, lasting 74 days and ending on the 14th of June, 1982. I just want to quickly say about this build. Um, like I said, I got a lot of like research from all different sources. Um, a lot of it being my parents. And I not only just asked my dad, I also asked my mum, can you remember anything about the flat 
we were sharing with dad in the 1980s, my mum couldn't really remember much. But the one thing that my both parents, both my mum and dad remembered, was the pine cladded bathroom that they had. I'm pretty sure this is more 1970s. But I thought, let's just pop it in here. It was the one thing that both of them remembered. Let's just do it. Um, so yeah, and also we have in this property, for the, so for this house on the left, we have three bathrooms. So I, this is just like a little one off just because, you know, my parents remembered it. The bathroom that we, we are moving on to, that this is more typically a bathroom you could probably have seen in the 80s. It has that um, mottled uh, effect just above the tiles. It has those very like spa-like marble-esque tiles going on. Um, my dad was also describing the tiles in their kitchen had this like um, French feathered look, like pattern to them. And I thought, okay, the pattern, uh, like the border, the, the pattern border for this these tiles isn't quite French feathers, but um, it's it looks fancy. We also have a separate loo um, because again that is something um, my parents had mentioned, and I thought throughout my like series of houses through the ages, I haven't separated the loo from the sink slash bath area. I thought why not let's do that for this build so I can I can say that I've done it at least once for one of my builds and it is a thing that you would typically see in older properties that again have not been renovated in a while um, a lot of people these days would just knock down the wall and make it one big giant bathroom and I think for gameplay especially with the infants there um, I think for gameplay wise it would be handy to have a separate loo um, so yeah, so this is the living room. Again, this living room is inspired and based upon um, Ashes to Ashes. So again, this is Alex Drake's living room. And um, I noticed she had like wooden or um, laminate flooring or something in her living room. I decided not to go for that because yes, I know the they are like separate walled off rooms it just look a little bit odd and weird so I decided not to and carry on the um cream beige carpet um another thing that my parents remember was in the hallway it was beige carpet but it was actually carpet tiles fortunately we don't have carpet tiles in the sims 4 so I just had to you know do what we have back to the facts about the 1980s um where did I get to 1983 Culture Club Karma Chameleon had um, lots of sales, which makes their biggest selling song in 1983 in the UK. I'll put the number up. In 1983, Margaret Thatcher's second election victory. In 1984, Miners Strike and Top of the Pops musicians gathered in Notting Hill Studio to form Band Aid and recorded the song do they know it was Christmas? It was formed by Bob Geldof and Midge Yuri, and it was number one for Christmas. So this is the kitchen that I was mentioning when I was doing the other's kitchen. And this is the type of kitchen I, I would typically see in bills that haven't been renovated in a long while. Um, but this was also the kitchen that I saw when I was looking through uh, family photos. Um, Particularly that sort of like cooker hob there. It was like exactly the same one. So like, oh that's great. We have that in the Sims 4. I also um also found some like IKEA um catalogue images. In this dining room, I just basically followed that exact same picture. So this is like a come on which come on which decade, like what not which decade, which year it came from because I found loads of like 1983, 1985. 1988 I found loads of like Ikea uh, pictures from the 1980s and um, that dining room is one of those pictures from from one of the, the years I can't remember which so this is the I have no idea I don't know if this is a teenager's bedroom or like a parent's bedroom 
but um it's actually rather handy dandy that i did um use like the shelving system because it it makes so no hang on hang on it's great that i did the shelving thing uh, because it then like covers up the messy windows and i also covered it out with the blinds i noticed a big trend of like office the office look but at home i saw a lot of that and i also saw a lot of like um water coolers but at home um i was like why do you want a water cooler why why do you have the need for that much water at home i've no idea um so yeah so i do cover it up with the window situation with shelves and um blinds there like office blinds and again this be this bedroom is based on an i an ikea picture i don't know it might be 1985 but it was a living room but i decided to uh transform it into a bedroom instead for the next bedroom for the next bedroom i know i haven't got through my facts but memphis bedroom uh so for the next bedroom i did a memphis bedroom so um memphis design was very big in the 80s especially in america and i know this is all about what you would typically find here in the uk but if i mention 1980s design i think a lot of people would think memphis so for the last bed i thought let's not let's just go with it let's just go for it so for the 1980s memphis design it was based on neon colors pastels or primary colors so that included red yellow and blue geometric patterns and bold patterns circles triangles black and white color schemes graphics polka dots and squiggly lines and so for my 1980s memphis bedroom i know a lot of like memphis design at the moment will go for more of like a pastel color scheme but for my 1980s memphis design i decided to go for more of the primary colors color scheme just to make it more look dated in a way so it looks more like it came from the 1980s and not a memphis bedroom that you would typically find today so that's what i decided to do i'm doing the bathroom um the bathroom tiles is again these are the bathroom tiles i found in the background of again ashes to ashes it was in the dining room kitchen area but i thought let's just stick them into this bathroom we are now on the memphis bedroom like i said i went for the primary color scheme so hang on red yellow and blue again just to make it look like it, it it's from the 1980s not the here and now and at first i thought oh my gosh how am i gonna do this memphis style bedroom i don't have the pastel pop kit what am i gonna do i felt i was like i can't do this i can't i need it but it turns out i don't need it i found that if i have the discovery university and what's it called the fancy fashion brand moschino um if i have discovery university and moschino it's fine i can create a pretty good looking in my opinion um memphis looking bedroom it's it's fine so i actually had a lot of fun of doing this because it's a style that i've never done before and it's so far removed from a style that i would typically do and i just had a lot of fun doing this that, that's the cats and dogs dresser it was like perfect it had like that curved um shape that i was looking for but the problem was the drawer handle so i decided to flip it over and just cover those up but i think this got four minutes i think we're going to move on to the garden so this is the garden for the very first house that we were doing so the house on my left hand side um and both houses are very both houses for the garden are actually very similar they both have a washing line a shed um i do put a few items in the shed like a christmas tree a decorating box a bike so things you would typically find in a shed um i also put a swing in both gardens and uh, a barbecue and a outdoor dining table but they are pretty much the same the one on the left is slightly bigger because it has a bigger house i do i do see there's two big trees i do shrink them down to the same size as the other ones and just quickly going back to the facts because i spent an entire evening writing all these down so i'm gonna get a through as many as possible so 
We are at 1984, Kelly's Whisper also came out. In 1985, Live Aid was held on Saturday, the 13th of July, 1985, to raise money for charity. It was at London, Wembley, then Prince Charles, and Princess Diana officially opened it. Uh, found nothing for 1986. In 1987, a powerful storm hit the parts of the UK, with winds gusting up to 100 miles an hour. In 1988, Eddie the Eagle took part in the Winter Olympics. He became the first competitor since 1928 to represent Great Britain in Olympic ski jumping. In 1989, a crash developed at the Hillsborough Stadium in Sheffield, resulting in 97 Liverpool fans' deaths. So this is my 1980s build. I, I hope you have enjoyed watching. I hope if anyone out there recognises anything or anything I have said uh, from the 1980s that would be great um, but thank you for watching please like and subscribe and um, hopefully I'll see you in the next one so thank you <laughs>